All right, tutorial on installing your cheek riser onto your buttstock. I've already done this, so it'll be easier to show you all the steps in one quick, concise video. So the first thing you're going to do is you'll take the template. This comes with the kit. You're gonna tape this on here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure, pick a, pick a nice solid line, measure you know a couple spots, make sure it's square, do that on the other side. It is very important that you get these holes square to the holes on the back side, right? So you're gonna drill, you're gonna drill these two holes and you're gonna drill the other the holes on the other side. So it's very important that you don't get this twisted like this when you tape it on, right? It's not up whatever, you know, it's square. So these holes line up with the holes on the other side. So how they make most of these stocks is it's a it's a hollow shell. So you Drilling straight through doesn't really work that well. If you try that, you'll blow out the backside real bad. Um, so what you want to do is drill this side and then drill the other side. So it's very important that this step is done properly. Measure many times, make sure everything's square before you start to drill in. So that is very important. And like you see, I just put some tape on here, get it on there, adjust, measure, make sure everything's square. And then I just take a fine tip marker right mark my holes and then I drill the kit is going to come with a brad point drill bit and that is going to be your best bet for drilling these stocks a Forstner bit will also work but the kit comes with a drill bit so you don't have to worry about that uh, just use the brad point drill bit that it comes with the kit it does very nice holes in these fiberglass and or carbon fiber stocks um, most of them have some sort of fill in them to quiet down some of the hollow noise. It's either going to be some foam, like spray-in type foam, or some fiber fill of some sort. So once you drill in this side, and then once you drill in that side, then you can run the drill all the way through, right, and clean all that stuff out. Again, you don't want to drill through this side and then drill through that side from this hole. That'll have a tendency to blow that side out and fracture that out. Um, you'll get a much cleaner install if you drill this side and then drill this from the opposite side, okay? So make sure you do that. So once we have our holes drilled and then all that material cleaned out of those holes, then we're gonna take our spacer material, right? And we're gonna cut it to size. Uh, we don't pre-cut this because stocks come in different thicknesses. So you're gonna have to cut this material. Um, hacksaw will work just fine. If you stick this in the freezer while you're doing all this other stuff, these pipe cutters that you use for like copper pipe will work. Um, but if the, this material is like over, I don't know, 50 degrees or so ambient temperature, these don't cut that well with these cutters. Um, so a hacksaw will be uh, the, the tool there. And then just use some sandpaper or whatever to clean up the edges and make a nice bevel. Um, if you do stick it in the freezer and you happen to have one of these tubing cutters that is used for copper tubing, uh, they will work, but this has to be cold for it to work. If it's, you know, 60 degrees or whatever, it just kind of bends and it, it doesn't leave a nice cut. So hacksaw, clean up the edge with some sandpaper, bevel of the edge. So what you want to do is leave this about a 16th long, right, on both sides. And we want this to stick out from the stock just a tiny bit so that when we start when we tighten these screws, we're not tightening onto this stock because it's just a hollow stock and it's it, you can flex it and you can end up cracking it if you put pressure on it. So that's why we have these spacers. So all the pressure is applied to these spacers and not the stock. Okay, so once we have these cut to a 16th inch long on each side, so two sixteenths of an inch long, right? Wider than this stock, that's how you'll cut these nice bevel clean up the edge with some sandpaper install these into the stock now we're ready for our cheek riser this is going to come to you flat like so okay and what you're going to do is you're going to just start bending this and roll it basically like a baseball cap if you've ever taken a flat bill baseball cap and made it a round same thing just just roll it and flex it and be real gentle with it and go slow um, if you if you just grab it and go like this, you can you can possibly run the um, run the risk of creasing it, and you don't want to do that. So just gently roll it and roll it and roll it, and then when you get close, stick these two screws through 
this side, okay, you'll, you'll notice there's some narrow slots and there's some wider slots, okay? The narrow slots are for the screws and they are sized for this shank portion right here. So it'll be a little tough to get the threaded portion through, but you just, just shove it through there and then it will slide nicely on that shank portion and then the post will go through this side, okay? And these are the posts, so they go through the wider slot screws go through the narrow slot so what once you'll do is once you get this really once you get this fairly close to the shape you want by just rolling it and bending it gently right we want to get a nice gentle bend and not crease okay then we'll stick the screws through we'll stick this in all right then we'll stick the posts through the back side and they will screw together and then we can clamp this down and then adjust it to what we need. Now, when you go to adjust it, you'll of course need your scope on your rifle. And what you wanna do is get it somewhere where you think it's close, screw it down loosely, and then rest your face on the rifle as if you were gonna take a nap. And when you open your eyes, I'm sorry, close your eyes, lay your face on your rifle, open your eyes, your face and your eyeball should be perfectly aligned with your scope. If it's not, you know, note whether you need to come up or down, move this up or down. And what I like to do when I do my final adjustment is I like to cant the front just slightly and that will make, make certain when the rifle recoils, right, it's not slamming into your face. If this was like that, when the rifle recoiled, this part would slam into your face. So at level or slightly canted forward and that will make for a very comfortable shooting rifle as far as your face is concerned, right? So that's the basic install of the cheek riser. Uh, the Rasco Ultralight Cheek Riser.